Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, CBSI and YouTube and Twitter and uh, FaceBase and all the other good stuff. Everybody who's following my pages, I want to thank everybody for checking out these videos. Give me a like and a follow. And uh, Instagram now too added to the mix. I got I got myself an Instagram account. Uh, the success of Koi Cakes has inspired me to open up an Instagram account uh, related to comic books. So if you guys uh, are down for following me, uh, it's Ultra Maximus, but the L is a number one. Uh, yeah, so somebody else already had my name out there, so I couldn't even couldn't even secure that one. See, and this is why uh, brand imaging is very important. It's something you got to do from the start. But I wasn't really trying to make this a brand. It was just a video gamer tag, but. Anyway, uh, yeah, I got myself a little sweet little headset here, and uh, now I get to listen to, to podcasts in, in pretty good sound quality and also have myself a nice little microphone now. So hopefully everybody can hear me loud and clear. I know my videos kind of sucked in the past as far as uh, sound quality. And my one appearance on the uh, flip side, uh, I actually it looked like I ran over the microphone cord uh, with my chair. And uh, I don't think my mic was working. So, yeah, well, here we go. I got mic- I got to work the microphone now, so. Um, I don't really have like anything like super duper sick. I don't think, uh, you know, I've been looking at some of these pickups that you guys have been posting on the pickups page and it's been pretty gnarly. Uh, especially some of you guys who are at C2E2 in Indiana and and a couple of the other comic cons, uh, here, uh, John, you know, John Z picked himself up a a Sandman 75 second print, which I no longer own. Uh, I just want to give a shout out to, to Dr. Joe who, uh, now has one of the, uh, the four, I think now are that are 9.6 highest grading. There, there's no nine eights in existence yet, and I think they're all. Uh, I don't think there's ever going to be a nine point eight of that book, man. But um, hey, I guess uh, there we go. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I got a, I got a couple of stacks of books. You know, uh, started out with, um, uh, you know, some of the some people saying this is their letdown, but uh, I didn't didn't mind the finale to Dark Knight's Metal. I thought it was kind of. Uh, uh, throwback nostalgic have it end uh the way it did but i picked up just a regular cover of this one i'm not really into chasing down any of the, the crazy variants for it because god you know some of the store variants are starting to, I, I i i i'm very very choosy about which store variants i, I chase after so um but this year definitely a decent looking uh story ending finale uh, i don't know how you guys feel about metal um for me i thought it was just Kind of <laughs> not as good as I thought it was going to be. Um, and that's just honest. You know, I, I honestly thought more Snyder and Capullo was going to, you know, something some more craziness. But it, it was a, definitely a long, long, long drawn out story. Um, all the tie ins and things like that, too, tend to make it that way. But you know what? They, they had a very good, uh, very good basis for a lot of the characters that they used. And I, I think some of the, you know, the, the long lasting ones like the Batman Flats and things like that. Um, you, you know, it's going to have its takeaways. It's it's definitely you know a big major piece of DC canon now. So uh, unless they retcon it somehow again in the future with another Infinite Crisis or or whatever, but yeah, um, the the Hall of Justice thing uh, I think is kind of cool. The DC universe uh, kind of I think needs to centralize their stories, which is why I think Marvel's doing their their fresh start. But we'll we'll get into the Marvel stack here in, in a little bit. Um, but you know, regular covers for that, but. For Wonder Woman, of course, Jenny Frisian's uh, variant covers. I, I think her, I think I heard a rumor that her variant covers are coming to an end, which would be a very stupid thing for DC, I think. But don't quote me on that. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm always picking up the Frisian books, and, and of course, uh, the whole deal going on with Wonder Woman right now, with it being, you know, ties to her brother. Uh, I don't know if you guys are reading it or not to to catch all that stuff like it's going on in there it's good stuff um so yeah you know actually i'm chasing down a, a better condition copy of the variant for uh superman number uh 43 here is uh the ones that came into my local stores were, were both pretty pretty beat so uh, but funny enough i'm chasing down a regular cover for number 44 because all the all the regular covers that came into my stores were pretty beat so, uh, got, but I got myself a nice couple uh, high grade copies of both 43 and 44, but it was just a regular kind of variant. And the John Boy Myers uh, cover on that variant is looking cool. Um, I, I had my collection through CLZ, so uh, I think when I was looking at it, there there was uh, signs that uh, that Superman volume is going to be ending here soon. 
And I know it is. You know, they they got Ben just coming on, and he's he's taking over. I think Action One Thousand is going to be not only for Action Comics, and Action One Thousand, as far as I know, I, I, I don't think that that. But um, also, one thing that's also coming to an end, kind of satting, uh Super Sons. But uh, you know, now it's being relaunched as a DC, very you know, young kid, young readers title. Uh, anyway, um, here we have the uh, the variant for Super Sons number fourteen. Uh, just one of those books that I have enjoyed this this ride. It's going to actually end at issue sixteen. We already know that one uh, for a fact. All right. Um, continuing into the DC stack, we've got Harley Quinn number forty, the Fred Cho variant cover. Of course, uh, this one here uh, featuring her Ivy and Scarecrow. Frank Cho always delivers, and uh, in fact, Frank Cho is actually delivering right now. We have a two-parter coming from him. So this is uh, half of the connecting covers, and this is for issue 41. And I was able to find two very, very, very nice copies after digging through stacks at these stores. So, um, yeah, just putting together a set of those just to have an extra set. No real spec value other than... Um, but yeah, they call it old old lady Harley, old woman Harley, or whatever. So I don't know if there's spec there or not. Uh, I don't know how how well Harley Quinn's actually selling. It's just uh, it's just one of those books that I mean, so. like the Frank Show covers. But uh, as far as the rest of the DC stuff that I've got in the stack, it's actually been pretty good stuff to read. So if you're not reading these following books, I do highly recommend you do. Uh, we have here Batman White Knight. Uh, this would be. Seven variant number eight is coming out soon, and then it's going to require a reread from one through eight just to kind of take it all in. You know, uh, a lot of times when the thing I think Metal lost was its momentum is just because how long it took to, to put out the books. And I know it's a monthly title and stuff like that, but uh, you, you flooded us with all the different tie ins, and then you know, after that, it was just uh, you know, I think it took too long, <laughs> but. So those were decent, and as a newly, uh, this is cool, because now you guys can hear me when I turn my head, I know that was a problem before. Um, so, you know, as a newly, you know, recently married in the last couple of years, man, myself, I've been married for less than three years, but it'll be three years, coming up later in October. Uh, we've been together for a few more years on top of that, and we have a beautiful baby boy. So the wedding stuff, you know, kind of, kind of, kind of got me. So uh, of course, I, I went and picked up the set. Had to get the matching set. Uh, now I know that there's a couple of really cool con covers. Uh, I heard one of them got canceled. I think that was for the Dallas Fan Expo. That would have been the gold version uh, of number forty-four. Uh, but decent read. Uh, you know, Tom King does okay. Uh, um, I know I'm probably going to get slayed for this, but, you know, uh, okay. You know, Tom King does great other places, like his Mr. Miracle. Oh, my God, it's fantastic. Um, his Batman, you know, I think it's just, it's 44 was just not really about him. That It should have been, you know, Catwoman one shot, if anything. <laughs> like, <laughs> if you're going to do that kind of storytelling, uh, you know, I guess. Ah, it is what it is, man. You know, he, he's in control of the book. He's in control of the story. So he, he's writing what he what he wants. And it's being portrayed very well. Um, I do hope that the relationship that is a long-lasting one between Catwoman and Batman. But we all know how, you know, luck is with both Bruce Wayne and Selena Kyle. So, uh, but definitely, I got to say, that, you know, the hit book of last week, uh, it, it's not the Red Goblin. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but it's definitely, uh, in, in my honest opinion, it's definitely this DC book right here. It was definitely this DC cover right here. And I know it's Deathstroke versus Batman. And I know he's right now, he's, he's cleaning his sword on a Superman. It looks like Superman's cape. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, but Matina all the way, definitely, uh, I doubled down on this one. Um, it's actually selling for, uh, you know, a few, few beans online now already. As it should, because that that right there, um, from what I understand, Deathstroke isn't really as ordered as much as some of the other titles. Just totally understandable of the amount that it, you know, I've seen at my local stores. Um, but 
it does have a cult following. And then you add in the Matina collector factor, which Matina had a lot of books actually drop in the last couple of weeks. Um, yeah, and you know, it just makes desire. <laughs> so, you know, his books are definitely desired. Uh, so moving on, uh, we get into the independent stack. And of course, leaving off the independent stack, we're going to we're gonna go ahead and hit it off with uh, Bill Matina. So um, I left all the other covers on the shelf just because uh, the open order, the, or the, the opening again of final order cutoff uh, to order all you wanted this spawn 284. Definitely made it a little bit more uh, prevalent uh, in places, but still the Virgin variant cover is definitely what uh, makes this this cover just awesome. And uh, you know, I, I I actually have the Spawn 666, or or, or sorry, the the Spawn uh, two to whatever the the, the first Matina Spawn where they did 666 copies of them. Um, I did get the Virgin variant for that one, so. Um, Got to have a matching set. So got the set. Pretty happy about that. It's a stoked looking copy too. Um, all right. And then uh, the other big news. And, and then apparently, you know, C2E2 this weekend had uh, some variant covers coming out for some of these books that had, you know, an A cover and a B cover. But this is apparently the, uh, the big hit out of Image. Uh, it's kind of like a fantasy book. So like monstrous in my opinion monstrous definitely reminds me a lot of that final fantasy type of uh you know fantasy storytelling scenarios this is no different and this was recommended to me by uh, one of the comic shops by me so i'm kind of glad he recommended it because it looks like a very cool book i was only able to flip through it for a little bit uh but i'm gonna get to reading it and of course uh waiting for a, a few more of them to come through so all right so here we have uh this uh, Bill Sickwitz continuation of his variant set for The Walking Dead. Uh, this is the number 178. And I think we only have like one more of his variant covers coming up. So uh, that set will be completed. And then, um, so uh, if you have a moment, I would like to talk to you all about our, our you know, our Lord of Darkness and Universe to Devourer. Uh, his name is Unicron. You can see him on the cover of Robots in Disguise 32, 110, up behind me. Um, he's coming, and what that means uh, so far that I've been able to 100% confirm is that IDW is going to kill this continuity. So they're going to finish it, and they're going to have a Unicron come. Um, I hope he eats everything, because that's just a messed up thing to do especially after a very, very established continuity like they have right now with IDW. So, yeah, um, I'm a little disturbed about that just because this is the, they did a very good job of incorporating and, and adapting to all, all of the Transformer stuff coming out. And, and you know, no, no, not, not, not knocking Simon Furman, but he didn't get to finish the, in the Transformers universe the way he wanted to. Um, so just for those of you who don't know uh, what's going on here, basically the phase one and phase two are two different uh, sections of IDW's universe. That's about that. Um, phase one was written by Simon Furman, who was writing Marvel uh, when Marvel got canceled. He also did Generation 2 for Marvel after Marvel's initial run got canceled. And then uh, he was the basically the the architect of this universe. He was also working for, for Dreamwave, but we don't, uh, again, I don't give them any credit because they still owe people like $16,000 in back pay. So uh, that kind of stuff is uh, why I don't collect Dreamwave books. So, um, yeah, so the, you know, the early part of the universe, basically there there is no signs of the Matrix or anything like that. And basically what he was going to do is he was going to put Matrix in the Dark Universe. And Dark Universe is something that he created. You have to read it in order to find out what that's going on and with that. But uh, the wall of, uh, of Transformers behind me is, is any evidence that uh, it deserves the following that uh, it doesn't, I don't think, have. Um, but we have issue 16 of Optimus Prime, his retail incentive cover right here. And this is actually the, uh, the first cover appearance of Onyx Prime, uh, a.k.a. Um, I don't know if they're going to, it's not really as much as it, it was um, uh, Transformers Prime style, Onyx Prime, where if you watch the, the Transformers Prime animated series, the one with like three humans living on Earth, um, 
it's not like that at all but there's uh the 13 primes is still they're in trying to incorporate all that if you i have the covenant of primus hanging on my wall also and it's the big book um if you don't have never heard of that one you should look that one up too it's pretty it goes in pretty deep pretty deep in, in detail it's also got some pretty cool artwork in it but transformers is ending uh that was issue 16 of optimus prime uh, lost light's going to get caught up to him too and then what they're going to do is they're going to do bi-monthly until september and then september is going to be also the release of unicron number six so free comic book day is going to be unicron zero and then it's going to start up and kick this off and then uh yeah so uh unicron is coming and he is huge uh you say how huge well let me just show you this real quick because uh i'll give you a little screen share i'll show you i got him for a screensaver so that uh, yeah that's that's what unicron looks like he's massive that's that's him holding the earth i don't know if you can actually see that that's a very good view or not uh there we go there you go so uh that's how massive unicron is uh, that's one of my one of my screens so Okay, so let's get back to this. So yeah, Unicron, he's, he's gangster. He's he, he's huge. Uh, it's going to be probably one of the biggest uh, versions of Unicron because uh, Unicron, um, he was pretty big when he when he uh, was in the Marvel series, going after Cybertron. Um, so yeah, and uh, yeah, so Transformer stuff always going to be number one, and then they said they're they are going to reboot, and IDW's not losing that but i do know that they have architecture that they want to incorporate for their shared universe and uh you know one of our one of our buddies uh was was like how did i miss a microdots movie on the schedule for 2019 i'm like oh yeah they kind of slid that in there with their hasbro shared universe uh there's a gi joe movie coming also um i don't, I don't know what they're doing there with this third gi joe movie but supposedly gi joe and bumblebee uh might not be in the new shared universe and they might just be to close out paramount's uh license for three movies and uh, yeah you know there's so much politics behind the scenes but anyway let's get into some more marvel pickups here and then uh this is going to be this is the final stack of books i got guys it's been it honestly it's been a, a light couple of weeks and what i notice is that we're heading for a reboot and as we head towards a reboot my level of book collecting drops off dramatically and i only stay focused on the stuff that i like to read so, um, one of the surprise reads uh, definitely was uh, Venomized. Now, all right, so this is this is kind of a big deal. So, so what we have right here is Venomized is uh, a continuation of the Poison X story that happened uh, in X Men and Venom. So, X Men and Venom, the poisons start infecting people. And basically, there's a whole other multiverse of poisons who have infected people, like Thanos, and Doctor Doom, and things like that. So that, that's where that's where all that's coming into. So Venomized number one, surprising read. Um, if you haven't read it, 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 all the edge of the Venom verse and then Venom verse and I, I think some of these other stuff, all are predicate, you know, precursors to Venomized. So, uh, but definitely reading uh, this one right here, X Men, or, or I'm sorry, uh, All New Wolverine uh, number thirty three is definitely the first appearance of Gabby as a Wolverine, and not as the Honey Badger. So pretty cool. She's on the cover. Um, Wolverine of the Future. This is the, uh, a story that does take place in the future, and definitely good read. There was a variant for that that, I, you know, I, I really find it hard to believe that sometimes a variant cover that has nothing to do with the book, uh, not even the characters in the book, uh, it shouldn't really be there. Like you know, the the, the Dodson. Amazing Spider-Man that I have in my stack here, probably you know as close as I'd like. Oh, okay, you know it's a cool looking book, but I, I don't like. I really don't. Feel, oh, oh my goodness, <laughs> I lost the book. And this is why you mile all your books, because uh, even though it fell, everything's upset. So uh, okay. Uh, but getting into the rest of the stack here. So yeah, we've got uh, so you know some more printings of Thanos. So this right here is the third printing now of Thanos number 15. Uh, the Thanos series has definitely been delivering <laughs> hardcore. We have one more issue to go for the finale, and I'm excited to read it. Um, and then, of course, we have issue number 16. Uh, this one right here is the second printing of number 16. Got to keep up with all these printings. Uh, I'm, there, uh, I'm actually missing, I think, two or three books 
uh, maybe four from the whole run of Thanos. But uh, some of them were, like I said, uh, like a variant cover that wasn't anything to do with the book, like the Jim Lee. With the Jim Lee, Jim Lee Strong Guy and Polaris cover is one of them. Um, but man, if you're not reading Thanos, uh, this right here is probably the issue that you should just read, uh, buy it online, uh, if you can't find it in your local store, just or buy it digitally and read it because it's pretty sick. And then that, that, as soon as you do that, you'll go back and you'll read all the rest of the Thanos books, which is nothing, you know, nothing to be ashamed of. But of course, um, now myself bearing for cover price too. And, and that right there, it was all the difference because I had one of my stores, uh, you know, I, I, I understand people wanting to make money on the market when they see the market moving, but man, one of my stores slid that book into my, into my full box that I, you know, I've had on pre-order. I am one of their pre-orders and like Jimmy every variant for Thanos. Uh, that's, that's what I want. That's what I want. Uh, but you know, they slid it into my box for 15 bucks and I put it back on the wall. It still sold. So, but I nabbed one for cover price at the other store, thankfully. Um, but uh, there is also the uh, store variant for that one. I did not pick that one up uh, as much as I want to. Uh, I don't think I'm probably going to do store variant. But um, so coming up, we have Cable. Uh, this Stegman variant is definitely a follow up to his Thor, Mighty Thor variant cover that he did. Um, I bought a couple of covers, bought a couple of copies of that cover, and uh, unfortunately, they, they all. <laughs> They didn't really hit uh, where I needed them to hit, so it's, it's fine though. Um, the uh, cable right here though happens to be a first appearance of a new villain, and it's also precursor to a big story that's coming up, and the return of Hope Summers, yeah, right around the same time that we have a new movie coming out. I, I just don't, I don't understand it, but uh, yep, this is definitely one of the reasons why I definitely picked up two copies of this book. Uh, it's actually selling pretty well. It's actually. Uh, they are correct. It, cable doesn't sell very much. I don't know why. Um, but that's cool. Very covered. Love Stegman's art on that thing. And then uh, definitely picked up this thing uh, right here. This is uh, World War Hulk 2, I believe, part one. So uh, this is definitely a little bit of a homage variant right here. Good stuff. I'm not reading too much of the Cho Hulks, but some of them are... are uh, Pretty intriguing. I'll probably get back to reading them when they're available digitally on Marvel Unlimited. Um, Iron Man, Hong Kong Heroes. We do have the first appearance of another person who donned some Iron Man armor. So uh, I definitely picked up the cover that had her on it. And uh, picked up a, a lot of the copies that I saw in the store had really twisted up spines. So uh, it, it took, took a lot to find us a little good one uh, here. So um this course right here my thor 705 706 i believe is dropping uh next week uh if it hasn't dropped already but um this good read of course uh watching jane foster and there are finishing her run with her as thor so uh we also got here moon girl thankfully my local comic shop pulled this one off for me so i i it was definitely a late ad, uh, and it was definitely uh, a sweet enough copy for me to continue on with it. So I want to give uh, a thanks to them. And then uh, speaking of the, the the whole poison thing, so I, sh I started off the Marvel stack here with the Venomverse one, right? Um, well, Venom number 164 did have a Venom versus Poison variant cover that's black and white. So you want to talk about top 9.8? <laughs> I dug through a stack of these. Uh, it wasn't a very big stack. It was only, it was definitely, I think, less than 10 copies. So, um, trying to find a good one for the, the personal collection just because I have a feeling about the reception of the poisons and the possibility of them. You know, I hate to say it that I, I don't, I don't have a lot of faith in the Venom movie, but if they are going to make a franchise of it, they're going to, they're going to draw from the books still. We're going to draw from the books and they're going to do it without Spider Man. So how do they do that? Well, you know, a, a natural enemy of the Venom Clintar. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so the poisons are essentially the natural enemy of Clintar. They're basically a predator of Clintar. Um, very interesting how they, they tie together, but they, they do have uh, definite, uh, definite relevant, you know, relevant things that tie them uh, to each other. So I just want to mix up the stack here because um, a lot of hype. 
lots and lots of hype. So uh, Amazing Spider-Man 797 second printing uh, with the Norman Osborn uh, at the lower side and, of course, the Mary Jane and Peter Pitts at the top here. Let me back up on the screen here so you guys can get a mental review of it. So, okay, so everybody's uh, starting to speculate on who's dying. They said there's two major deaths coming in 800, and uh, people are starting to speculate that Mary Jane's going to die. And if they kill Mary Jane, you're going to... Uh, I, 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 I don't know why they would want to do that for shock factor, but it's Slot going out, and Slot's probably going to want a big bang on his way out the door. So, yeah, you may be looking at the death of Mary Jane coming up soon, but uh, this is definitely the book that everybody was talking about this week. The first full appearance of Norman Osborn as Red Goblin. So, uh, yeah, so Red Goblin's first appearance is still on the uh, comicsology or uh, comics exposure. <laughs> uh, it makes Spider Man 796 uh, variant cover. So. If you're chasing the first appearance of that character, that's where it is. Uh, store variant that that you know predates the other issue by a month. So 797 had the design variant by uh, Mc, uh, I think it might have been McGinnis. Um, but either way, so it doesn't matter what 797 store variants have, including the Red Hobgoblin one. You know, homage back to the Hobgoblin. Um, yeah, you know, talk about that. That one was an issue too late. So. As I was talking about different variants, you know, the percentile variants, the Venom 30th anniversary variants have been kind of cool. And I picked up the one for Venom just because it's Venom versus Poison. I think it's a very fitting thing for you, especially what's going on um, with the Venom verse books. And then, of course, here we have uh, this throwback to the, the, you know, the time frame from Amazing Spider Man 300 when Venom, you know, was basically in there. He, he went in there and tried to hurt Mary Jane. Where I'm pretty sure he did hurt her. So uh, shame on him because uh, Venom was a villain back then. And now he's all of a sudden he's an anti-hero. And that's why everybody's pushing for Tom Hardy. Good luck to you guys who are supporting that one. Um, uh, but I want to be proven wrong. I enjoy being proven wrong. So True Believers uh, Thanos. This is the affordable way to get yourself a copy of Iron Man 55. I don't know if it's going to do second print like some of those Deadpool ones do. But. Here's an affordable way to read Iron Man 55 with the first appearance of Drax, the Blood Brothers, and of course the main man Thanos himself. All right, so I'm finishing off, of course, Old Man Logan. And as we know, Old Man Logan is going to be reverting back to Wolverine. They're not going to, the, the hunt for Wolverine or whatever they're doing. Or you think they're going to leave Old Man Logan, Wolverine in the same universe? No, they're probably going to send, you know, one of these guys somewhere so and it's probably gonna be old man logan to get sent somewhere and it sucks because he's pretty much the coolest version of, of wolverine i think that they've ever had so um but definitely finishing off the series just because it's been pretty good uh him versus bullseye i haven't actually read this one yet haven't had time to but i'm gonna get into it and then i'm gonna finish this off with uh three more in the hole for the variant uh collection of star wars action figure variants Still chasing. I know JTC got another exclusive coming out here soon. Uh, Luke the Couch was on eBay, of course, taking them from the $20 price that he charges. And they got them up like $39, $40. So uh, I hate it, but uh, you know, some of them, if I miss out, I'll have to chase it somewhere else. But I'm trying not to miss out on this next one just because I don't want to. Um, yeah, but anyway, so yeah, those, uh, this is uh, issues 43, 44, and 45 added to the stack. Um, it's, it's so much easier now that the hip hop run is done too, because there's uh, a lot less books to chase. And, uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's my haul. Like I said, guys, not really too, anything too crazy that I picked up in the last couple of weeks. I've had some better pickups, uh, in the past, but, uh, we'll see what happens when, uh, I get a stack that's, uh, too high for me to, uh, you know, to, I have to put stuff in boxes, man, because I gotta I gotta clear out this office, keep this office occupied uh, and able to work in. So, but uh, yeah, so shout out to all my CBSI uh, friends who uh, you know check out the podcast through the link in, in the pickups page, and I want to give a shout out to the forum. Uh, I'm gonna try to be active there as much as possible, and uh, also to to my brothers in the hangouts and. Uh, yeah, thanks again, everybody, for checking out, and uh, don't forget uh, I've got the face space. I've got the, uh, the Instagram and I've got the Twitter, you know, you can get at me so many ways. Uh, thanks again for watching and I'll check you guys on the next one. Later.